is is there talk about splitting the titles or there's creating talk. creating there, a new title? There's, maybe? there's absolutely talk of creating a new title. Yes, yes. Um, I think that um, it's been a year. I think that they always, you know what I mean. It was like the mentality was always that it's it's each brand should have a title. But I think this year was so, you know above and beyond everything. This entire year was all about getting Roman Reigns over and trying to get him to that John Cena level to where he is this big attraction in this, you know, they, they, you know, you know, not, not even for just this year, but for the future where, where you have, let's say he goes away. Let's say he goes to Hollywood where you have a guy who can bring back three, four times a year, like John Cena, and he can fill houses as opposed to be a guy who's on top. You know, who, a lot of guys are guys on top, but they, I think that they felt that they needed to make, that long term, that Bill Goldberg, that Steve Austin like legend, and and no, he's not at that level, but also um, there's a, that nostalgia thing where if he goes away, people oh Roman Reigns he was on top for five years, six years, and they could call him like one of the all time greats. So I think that that was a lot of what this year is 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 both to create that you know giant giant star with a long championship run. And um, really the focal point of the promotion and clearly the number one guy. I think that's what this year was about. Not having to, you know, muddle to championships and all that. But in the long term, I think they want Raw and SmackDown to each have titles. The one thing we did learn from this, though, is that, that they don't have to do that because they went this year and they did house shows with and, and, and you know, Raw every week with, with Reigns rarely appearing. And raw numbers were, you know, they were same as last year, and same, same as you know, I mean, it was down a little bit. I think they were, they were down um six percent in uh, eighteen forty nine, but homes were down six percent for for USA. So it's it's the same essentially. And viewers was actually up a little bit. You know, older viewers was up. So what they proved was they don't need a champion who's on TV each and every week to do at the level that they're doing now. So it's not like it's a must. But it is something that I think that they want. So, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know exactly when it'll be. I've heard people say that they're going to do it at WrestleMania itself, you know, the first night. And I have not had that confirmed. But the idea that they're going to do a second title is certainly something that's very talked about right now. By the way, who do you think it is going to win the Wrestler of the Year in the Observer Awards? We could talk awards. I, the awards ballot will be in next week's issue, by the way. Um, I think Moxley, don't you? I mean, MV I, MVP. MVP. The reason I say that is, um, you know, Reigns is certainly a guy who could win because he was champion all year and he was the number one guy all year. And he is over, even though a lot of people, uh, you know, whatever, you know, you know, I think there's there's something where I don't know what it is about top guys today not being, you know, what top guys. And, and I mean, there is something to that in the sense that, you know, it's like I can't go in there and go and point like, look at every quarter he's in it goes up because nobody's like that you know it's not like in the um you know when you had you know in the old days when you had steve austin when you had bill goldberg when you had rick flair when you had hogan you know um you know you could see that big jump every quarter we don't have anybody like that and roman's not that guy and nobody's that guy um some guys help a little bit more than others and he's one of them but it's not he's not a lock or anything like that i think you know that that they did a raw number a couple of weeks ago um, the one where he was on at the beginning of the show and you thought he was going to be there and they held up their audience real good. And I thought, you know what? I mean, I, I knew he wasn't there, but I thought like a fan's going to think he's, he's running at the end and they held that third hour much stronger than usual. So I, I, and, and I've seen a lot of evidence of, of him, but having said that, um, AW because of injuries, because of punk, because of a lot of things, um, they had a lot of, lot of big, big problems this year. And when they did, um, they, you know, they really, um, you know, the injuries and everything like that, they had a lot of, um, they, they needed people to hold the fort together. And really it was, it was John Moxley and Chris Jericho as the yeah. two guys. I thought that John Moxley and Chris Jericho were incredibly val valuable to AEW and with, with new Japan, um, you know, I, um, I, you know, Okada won MVP in Japan, but I just don't think that they had, a, I don't think that they had a good year. Um, you know, Okada's a great, great wrestler. Um, I'm trying to think, uh, you know, as far as 
yeah, and it it it's it's uh, Will Ospreay. Who I think I think Will Ospreay was actually New Japan's most valuable guy this year because he, you know, I thought his promos, I thought his 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 chase in G one, um, and his match quality, obviously. So I would say that the three guys to me are um, four. Um, you know, Roman is absolutely contender. John Moxley contender. Jericho and um, Will Ospreay. And, you know, it's depending on kind of your point of view. You know, matches, it's Will Ospreay. Uh, most outstanding, it's Will Ospreay. Uh, MVP, I think, is Moxley. Uh, biggest star, world champion all year, that's Roman Reigns. So you could, you know, those are those are the, the strongest candidates to me. Um, some would say, you know, Shuri, but... Um, I don't, I don't, you know, you, you could make that, you could make that call. You could make the call for Yuki Yoshoka, Dra Dragon Gate. I know some people have mentioned him to me. Um, but I, I, I guess my first place votes is going to be, uh, I, I mean, I'm pretty good at predicting who's going to win anyway, you know. Um, so my gut, my gut has always been for the last couple of months that it was going to be Moxley just because of, again, so many of the different things that happened where it was thrown on him. You know what I mean? I mean, he came back from the rehab. Um, and then, you know, he was going to go on the vacation, you know, cut off his vacation because he had to save the company, not save the company, but they needed him. And he was there when they needed him and they needed him more than WWE needed Roman because Roman was gone for long periods of time and the ship, you know, they didn't need him. Um, I really think AEW, if Moxley wasn't there to pick up the pieces after the punk incident, when, you know, punk, the young bucks and Omega are all gone, you still have, you know, other people injured and things like that. Um, I think that it was, um, I, I would say so. Well, how about you? I, I, I think Moxley's going to win. Uh, I know a lot of pro WWE fans who don't really watch AEW as closely. They, they think it's clear and far above Roman, but well, he's um, the biggest, he's the biggest, he's the biggest star. You know, you can't deny that. Yeah. I mean, I, I, if I vote, if I, if I add my awards, I would probably vote moxley but uh i mean it's it's close it's it's probably uh, what's the best roman has ever done in this award Do you um, remember well it was probably last year and um i think i think he was was he third last year i, I think he's gonna do his best though in your in your award. Well, he should he, he yeah. should for 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 him it should be his best year um and i could see him like i said I, I, I would think that, that Moxley and Roman would be the big, you know, and maybe Osprey would be the big three in the in in, in it. And um uh you know, I, I, I could see voting for any of the three. You know, they're just because either they're they're all they're all better than the other ones in different ways. If uh, New Japan w was bigger, uh I think Osprey would have a good chance, but you you don't hear a lot about them. Uh the as Yeah, they didn't have, they they didn't have a great year. Um, his, his, when he was on top, they, most of those shows did very well. Um, you know, and especially as us champion and not world champion. I mean, I thought that, that of late the U S title, and even at this Tokyo dome show, um, I think for the world stage, and I think new Japan even acknowledges that for the world stage, the main event is, is Omega and Osprey for the Japan stage. And in the building on that night, the main event is Okada and Jay White. I mean, I, I've seen it with, like, I mean, the thing, I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but um, I was, uh, the other night when I was uh, watching New Japan, um, the world, you know, and they had the big ad on the top, and it's for the Tokyo Dome, and I clicked in in, in Japanese because it's just, the, the, whatever, and there's, you know, Okada and Jay, as I expected, and then it was kind of like, you know, I need to navigate some stuff here, <laughs> and it isn't Japanese, let me click to English, and then there's the same big banner, mm -hmm. you know, for, for January 4th, and it's Omega, and Osprey, and it's like wow. And then I asked somebody and said, you know, you know, it's 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 not it's co-main event. It's not semi-main event. It was made very clear to me it's co-main event. And on the world stage, this is the main event. It's similar to um, when they had, um, I believe it was Okada and Naito and 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 Jericho and Omega, where yes, you could argue for the building, but even in the building, Omega and and Jericho was actually a bigger match, um, but you know, by tradition, because it's the world championship, um, you know, that, that should be the main event. But I think that they pretty much acknowledge that, um, 
you know, I, I don't know that they acknowledge in, J in Japan, okay, but they absolutely acknowledge from, from a world perspective. The world perspective main event is, is, um, Osprey and Omega. And it's the most intriguing match. I think it's a match that more people are looking forward to because it's, it's never been done since Osprey was at this level. And it's Omega's first real major singles match since Adam Page. You know, I mean, I think he's only had one singles match since then. And that was that, that, uh, dark match with, um, you know, with, uh, Sh Shimo. And, you know, that was just like basically a, a 13 minute, not squash, a 13 minute match, but it was, seemed to me it was just a match to get him as ready as one match can get you for this giant match. And I mean, he's, he's going in after that, uh, that crazy match on Wednesday. Um, I know people who were involved in that match who were just kind of going like, man, we're glad we have a week off after that one. And, <laughs> and, and Kenny's going to the Tokyo dome and wrestling Will Ospreay. He definitely doesn't have a week off. I mean, between the travel and having to do a match with, you know, this, this unbelievable wrestler, and you, you know, again, you know, with the pride and everything like that, it's, it's, this is a big one because man, they, they, you know, you talk about pressure, um, you know, for an in-ring match. I mean, there's, I, I, I think there's, it's the pressure is very, very high for those two guys um, because of, you know, because of their reps. I mean, it's, you know, um, so anyway. But did you know that in January, WWE presents the Royal Rumble? On the show will be what is being called a pitch black match. Why, you ask? Well, Mountain Dew apparently has a drink called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money. If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes and all you heard was, Oh, ow, boom. Oh. Oh. No, Mike, stop it. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.